Well, just to reset for everyone, in case you missed the discussion we had a couple of weeks ago, the Human Rights Act was changed last year in 2023 to add gender identity as a distinct protected class. Previously, it had been what the lawyers call subsumed within sexual orientation. And sexual orientation was in part of a religious exemption to the Human Rights Act um, that enabled religious communities, churches, mosques, synagogues, what have you, to conduct their business um, without having to violate their most sacred held beliefs regarding sexuality. As the concept of gender identity emerged in the culture, uh, we got to this point last year where they decided to add it as a distinct protected class in the Human Rights Act, but they did not add that new protected class into the religious exemption. That had the effect through the letter of the law of now making it so that if, uh, for instance, your church were to put up a posting for a youth pastor and a a trans woman, as they call them, um, were to walk in and apply for the job and you said, no, we can't have you here in that role because that is a fundamental violation of our most basic and sacred beliefs. And the purpose for which we exist is to uphold those beliefs. You can now be subject to lawsuit under this change in law. And so recognizing that a number of religious groups um, and, and Republicans gave Democrats the maximum benefit of doubt right? and assumed this has to be an oversight. There's just no way they could possibly be actually denying the most fundamental American right that predates the the government itself, right? The idea of religious liberty, the reason why the pilgrims came here to the new world to escape religious persecution. There's no way they're taking the wrong side of that coin, right? Uh, turns out they are, quite explicitly. A couple weeks back in the House Judiciary Committee, Harry Niska attempted to fix this via an amendment to the proposed uh, Human Rights Department policy bill. Um, that was not just rejected on party lines by Democrats, but it also came along with a hefty dose of them telling us that our religious views are wrong, hateful, uh, in the same category as chattel slavery, and that there's no place for uh, Bible-believing Christians or faithful Jews or faithful Muslims in the state of Minnesota. That's what they said, Mm -hmm. okay? Um, So the response to that was justifiably intense, And um, the bill was to be heard in the Senate Judiciary Committee about a week later, and it was pulled quietly. And so the reason why we haven't been talking about it is because work has been taking place behind the scenes to try to pressure and ensure that this was going to get fixed. Last night, while you slept, the Senate Judiciary Committee heard this agency bill from the Department of Human Rights. They were once again presented with the opportunity via amendment to correct this not in oversight, according to Chair Becker Finn in the House. They refused. Again, they voted on party lines again to deny you your most fundamental religious freedom, to nullify the First Amendment, to cancel your religious expression and your freedom of association. We now have Democrats on the record saying this is not an oversight. This was their intention. And I want to be very clear about what this means. This means that Chair Becker Finn, at the very least, because she explicitly said so, conspired against the rights of Minnesotans, okay? All this talk about insurrection Hmm. and conspiracy and attacks against democracy, Chair Becker Finn literally said it was not an oversight when she conspired against your First Amendment rights. That's the reality. And every Democrat in both the House and Senate Judiciary Committees has now affirmatively voted... To go along with that and say, yep, we're, we're conspirators too. Yep, we're oath breakers too. Yep, we're against the First Amendment too. And, and I got to tell you, I'm not in charge of these things, but I'm pretty certain that very soon every other Democrat in both chambers is going to be presented with the opportunity to declare whether or not they're going to keep their oath or break it. And it's going to be, ironically, a binary choice. There was a lot of religious organizations that came out very concerned about what they were seeing. Did they just basically see the risk versus reward here and they've collectively thrown their finger up at the at the religious community over this? Let me put it like this. Okay. Over the past couple of weeks, there has been no shortage of aggressive lobbying from clergy and uh, groups associated with every Abrahamic faith in this state. 
We've literally had bishops walking around the Capitol meeting with legislators for two weeks. There is a higher priesthood in the state of Minnesota. There is a God that has been put in place of yours in the state of Minnesota. They don't care what your bishop thinks. They don't care what your pastor says. They don't care what your scripture declares or what your God commands. They are your God now. That's what Minnesota Democrats are telling you. And it's up to you. Listen, let me speak to you, the listener. I know you knew you you never thought you were going to be faced with this moment, but you're faced with it. You are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You are Daniel. Are you going to pray three times a day with your window open on the top floor for all to see facing Jerusalem? Or are you going to let your children be taken captive into Babylon? That's the choice. And so you need to organize. You need to, you need to call your pastor today, right now. Pick up the phone and call them. Tell them what's happening. Organize your church. Organize your synagogue. Organize your mosque. You need to, to get on the mailing lists of the Catholic Conference and the Minnesota Family Council. You need to abide by their action alerts. You need to sign up for my legislative update. Google Representative Walter Hudson, official house page. Sign up for my email updates. You need to know what's going on and you need to act. You need to act as if your God is worthy of being served. Or, you know, maybe you don't actually believe that. I'm just wondering what type of behind closed doors conversations are being had with regard to this. Oh, I don't think we need to speculate as to what's being said behind closed doors because we have what they've been saying without shame out in the open. They're telling us that our religion is discriminatory. They're telling us that to live faithfully as a religious person in the state of Minnesota is an act of civil disobedience under the laws that they're writing. They're saying that. They're telling you that your faith is hateful, that your religious beliefs are bigoted, um, that you are on par with a chattel slaver if you simply do not want a dude in a dress to be teaching your children in church. That's what they're saying. They're saying it out loud. They're not pulling their punches, so I don't think we should pull ours. I, th- this, this is not a moment to grant somebody who is, who is actively attacking you any benefit of doubt. There's a talk back that came in that's kind of relating to this, and I just wanted to get your, to get your thoughts from the iHeartRadio app. Do the Republicans have the option of not going along and have enough uh, legislative clout to shut down the government? I know the Democrats control everything, but uh, once again, freedom of speech and freedom of a religion are probably our most important sacred rights along with the Second Amendment. If uh, the Democrats are going to usurp that, I think that's worth keeping the government shut down over the summer and into the election year. And I think Republicans need to have the courage to do that. Well, listen, I certainly don't dispute that Republicans need to have courage in this moment. By the way, all of us do not just elected Republicans. Yeah. I'll tell you what, my courage is worth a whole, has a whole lot less leverage than yours right now. Yeah. Because there's only one of me. And there's, you know, potentially six million of you. So um, if, you want, if you want to see courage, exhibit it, number one. Uh, number two, just structurally to what's being proposed there, we do not have that ability. There, there, is, there is no budget issue. Right. At, well, there is actually, it's come to think of it, there is one thing we could potentially do, and I don't know if my colleagues are going to appreciate me saying it. They want a bonding bill this year, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, that should be off the table. Yeah. That should be off the table. Walls needs to weigh in on this.